Well, how you doing, everybody? I was hoping today I would be talking with you all about the advanced screening of Ben-Hur that I attended this week, but I was not able to see the movie. Not because I didn't get into the screening, I did. I was in the theater, 3D glasses on, ready to go. Movie was supposed to start at 7.30. 7.30 rolls around, no movie. 7.35, still no movie. 7.40, still no movie. By the time it got to 7.45, I was wondering what the hell was going on, and finally someone came out and announced they were having trouble loading the movie into the projector, whatever that means, and they were not able to show us the film. But the nice people at AMC Theaters did give us all free passes so I can come back and see the movie for free whenever I want. Or I could just use the pass for a different movie. Doesn't matter. They didn't say I had to use it for Ben-Hur, so... I probably will, because I am kind of curious how that movie turned out, but instead of Ben-Hur, we're going to talk about War Dogs. Because the pre-screening for that movie was handled by people who knew how to operate the projector, apparently. Anyway, War Dogs is directed by Todd Phillips and is loosely based on true events. Very loosely from what I hear. It stars Jonah Hill as Ephraim Diveroli a man who recruits his old friend David Packhouse, played by Miles Teller, to help him with his business. And his business involves buying up very tiny government contracts because due to all the mess with the government assigning all these no-bid contracts to Dick Cheney's companies, after some new rules and regulations were passed, they have to open up their contracts so smaller companies can bid on them. And Ephraim's company, AEY, which apparently doesn't stand for anything, he just gave it initials because it sounded professional, goes after the smaller items that the bigger companies can't be bothered with. As he puts it, most companies are going after a bigger piece of the pie, they're just going after the crumbs. But there are a lot of crumbs. And over time, they start raking in some serious cash, which at one point nearly cost them their lives when they have to personally oversee a shipment of weapons from Jordan to Iraq and nearly get blown the fuck up by Al-Qaeda. And despite this minor setback of nearly getting shot to shit by terrorists, they are doing quite well for themselves until they get just a little bit overconfident and land a huge $300 million deal to supply troops in Afghanistan. And these two 20-something dudes from Miami Beach quickly find themselves in over their heads. And possibly in danger of losing their heads. So this movie is kind of like a cross between The Wolf of Wall Street and The Big Shorts. With guns. Lots of guns. And as I said, it is very, very loosely based on true events. Some of the events in this movie have either been embellished or just outright fabricated, which honestly I wasn't surprised to learn. The entire bit about them driving from Jordan to Iraq to oversee the shipment of these weapons and nearly getting blown up by terrorists never happened. But the most amazing part of this story, the part where these two 20-something dudes from Miami managed to score all of these government contracts, including a $300 million deal, and then tried to defraud the government by repackaging all of these 40-year-old Chinese-made AK rounds and getting busted by the feds, that actually happened. And that is fascinating stuff. And even if this movie is not 100% accurate, it's not a documentary. It's a fictionalized version of real events that's meant to entertain. And for the most part, it succeeds. And it mostly succeeds because of Jonah Hill. He is endlessly entertaining in this film. He is so funny. His character is basically the ultimate con artist, and it's a part that he plays so well. And that laugh. His character has a very unique laugh. I'm not even going to try to duplicate it, but oh my god, it was so good. Miles Teller also does his part well. He's not quite as entertaining as Hill, which is a bit unfortunate since the entire story is told from his point of view, but he's still pretty solid. We also got a couple of basically extended cameos from Bradley Cooper and Kevin Pollack. They are awesome. And we have Ana de Armas, who plays David's wife, Is. And her performance was fine. The problem I have is really with the character. It's just, it's not a very well-written character. Basically, she's David's trophy wife. 
And that's about it. When David first starts working for Ephraim, he initially tries to keep the nature of their business a secret because his wife is apparently very anti-war and the two of them even attended anti-war rallies and stuff. We never actually see any of this because well, why would we? <laughs> Show, don't tell, Mr. Phillips. Show, don't tell. But anyway, David is constantly lying to her about his work with Ephraim and has to skip out on family time with his wife and also his daughter. He even has to bounce out of their first sonogram while she's pregnant so he can take a business phone call. Like, this guy is kind of a douche. And through it all, she is entirely too forgiving. She first discovers that David had been lying to her just before he and Ephraim are about to leave to go to the Middle East for their magical truck ride through the Triangle of Death. And when she first finds out, she is extremely pissed off. But during their magical truck ride through the Triangle of Death, she calls him up and says, you know, I know I was really mad at you, but I guess I really wasn't thinking about how much pressure you would be under with us trying to start a new family and all that. And like, hold the phone. He lied to her, and now she's apologizing to him. I'm sorry, what kind of happy horse shit is this? Like I said, this movie is loosely based on real events, and I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say that that conversation between David and Iz never fucking happened. There are also a few moments in this movie that don't work very well. I already mentioned when they're telling instead of showing about how Iz is very anti-war, and there's also this moment near the end when it looks like David just might be in trouble with the feds after they were repackaging all that Chinese ammo, and his wife, who is somehow still with him at this point, entirely too forgiving, says, you know, maybe you should call my uncle, the lawyer. Oh, really? Well, thank you for specifying that your uncle is a lawyer, honey. Given the fact that we've been married for several years and have a child together, I never would have known. There's also one moment that has a pretty obvious editing gaffe. There's a scene where David and Ephraim are having a little conversation on the beach, and it's got a basic two camera setup, one camera pointing at Miles Teller, one pointing at Jonah Hill. And at some point in the conversation, while the camera is focusing on Jonah Hill, there's this couple that's walking down the beach in the background, and then it cuts back to Miles Teller, and suddenly that couple is over here. Oops. And I don't normally look for editing mistakes like that. When I'm watching a movie in the theater, I'm there to enjoy myself. So if I can spot something like that without trying to spot it, you done fucked up. But while the movie has its flaws, I was still entertained. It has some very funny moments, and Jonah Hill's performance is just fantastic. I don't know that I would recommend anyone pay full price for this one, but as a matinee, go for it. And that about wraps it up for War Dogs. So until next time, take care.